All right, everyone, so for day four of our social media class, the big idea will be Pinterest. But before that, I want to do a quick recap of a couple of little things from the three networks we've talked about so far. So I'm going to back up, and we're going to talk about a couple of little things here and there for Twitter, and then we'll go on. So we created a Twitter account four weeks ago, I guess. Hopefully you still have your login information. If you don't, just follow along. You don't have to create a brand new account if you can't get back into it or you did delete it or whatever. Don't worry, just follow along for a little bit. I'm going to recap a couple quick things for Twitter. So what I'd like you to do is go to your web browser and go to twitter.com and sign in. Again, we created a Twitter account four weeks ago. You may or may not still have that login, but I'll show you a couple of things. Go to twitter.com and sign in. All right, so you want to log in. Um, I've got an account loaded up here. The things that I want to... Oh, yes, question. That's okay. Just uh, That's one of the things we did on the first day of class. You might not have been here on the first day of class, so that's okay. Just follow along for the moment, and then when you're able to create an account, you'll be able to apply this. Um, so once you've got uh, your login here, uh, Let's check something. On the top right corner, you always have the tweet button, and next to it you have your company, your profile settings. If it still shows the little egg, that means you haven't you know, fully set it up yet and you want to set it up as soon as possible, as we talked about on the first day. But click on your little profile icon there, and then um, let me know. How many of you raise your hand? How many of you see an analytics link like me? Okay, if you don't see it, uh, no problem. Analytics is Twitter's screen where it shows you the statistics about your clicks and your reach and all of that. And if you want that and you don't have it in the menu, it's pretty easy to actually use and set up. We just do it like this. Go to the address bar and go to the website, and I mentioned it before, analytics dot twitter dot com so if you don't see that analytics link in your corner there in your icon you can still go to it via analytics dot twitter dot com I think after you go to this once or twice directly like that then it'll add itself to your menu we'll have to confirm that but go to analytics dot twitter dot com Now, I've already set this up with an account, so it may be a little bit different from yours, but let me look over someone's shoulder. What do you see when you guys go to analytics.twitter.com? If it's not showing up, try typing, try to be re refreshing it or reloading it. Just click the, click the uh, refresh button.
you're, you're if you're seeing a broken link, which is very odd, what you want to do is this, I guess. Type in the address analytics.twitter.com slash about. It looks like for a few people, if, if your link, if it said broken link or whatever, I guess you can go to that. So analytics.twitter.com slash about. And then there will be a message that says turn on analytics. Once you see that, click the button to turn on. I think it'll have you log in. And then once you log in, it will take you to a screen that's something like this. So it looks like it needs just to be activated the first time. And for some reason, the link was broken. But uh, that seems to be an alternate um, address. Uh, I believe after we activate it, after we do, do this process of activation, now, when you log in in the future, you will have on your icon at the top, it'll say analytics. So if you were able to, does everyone see a screen kind of like this then? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, so uh, this screen here is your analytics. It tells you within the past 20 days a sum summary of various things, how many times you've tweeted, your impressions. Impressions is a key word that you hear a lot in social media and uh, and an SEO. Impressions are basically that your content was seen by X number of people. You know, impression, you, the people were impressed by it. In, not, in the, in, not in the usual sense of the word, but in the sense of that simply that your content was seen by people. So, in the last 28 days in this account, uh, this was seen by 4,500 people. Now, about um, 200 or something followers are uh, follow this account. And so, this impression, why it's so much higher, is because Twitter is also trying to show your content to not just the direct people that you have a connection to, but to more people that could be interested in it. But impressions are just one value that we need to know about. Conversions are the bigger value. And uh, conversions are actually that someone clicked, someone did an action. Uh, here, I don't believe we see an actual word conversions, but they call it in different they call it different things. They call it actions, I believe. I'll, I'll confirm that in a moment. But the two big keywords of social media are impressions and conversions. And basically, compressions are that uh, in impressions are that someone sees your content on Twitter, on Facebook, on your website, on Google search, whatever. And conversions are that someone actually did something, that they clicked on the tweet, that they watched your video, that they bought your product, etc. So a conversion is an actual action. Victor, is the 28 days, is that since the last time you checked, or how does that...? No, it's a rolling 28 days. It's always going to show you a trailing 28 days from now. And so you'll see these stats, down arrows, up arrows, you see the red and you think, that's so terrible. Well, yes or no, it really depends what you're trying to accomplish on Twitter or any social media. You have a negative value, uh, and if you haven't been active, like honestly in this account, it hasn't been very active in the last 28 days. It, there's only been four tweets, so that's 20% less, less than last time, which of course then relates to less, um, in, less impressions. Less people saw your content because it was used less. Well, that's easy to fix. Use Twitter more. Use Twitter more often, once a week, twice a week, whatever. Use Twitter more and you'll get more impressions. Impressions are nice, but actual conversions are better. So here's, here's a, a couple of other conversion possibilities. Profile visits. More people look at your, at your actual profile. Uh, so that's a kind of a conversion. Someone has not looked at your profile. Someone then has looked at your profile. That's a conversion. Someone has not bought a product. Someone has bought the product. That's a conversion. Someone has uh, not followed you, but they do follow you. That's a conversion. So it's any goal, any action that is accomplished. So here, I tweeted a little less, but the profile was seen 91% more times than the previous time. Perhaps that tweet was 
you know, picked up by someone that retweeted it and it showed it to more people, more clicks. Mentions are that someone on Twitter, you know, replied to your company or mentioned your company anywhere on Twitter. And so there were five this month, which was 25% more than last time. Followers, oh, eight followers were lost. We had whatever amount of followers, 185 plus eight, and then well, for whatever reason in this month it went down. Well, that means I'm doing terrible on Twitter, right? No, those losses could have been spam accounts that were shut down. Those could have been someone that accidentally clicked follow and then whoops, and then unfollow at that moment. So not necessarily bad that you see negative numbers, you just have to think about them in context. Eight less people are following you. But those eight accounts, again, could have been spam accounts, they could have been irrelevant accounts, etc. And they could have been real accounts that were paying attention to you and see that you're not tweeting anymore, and therefore why would I keep following you? Okay, so keeping those followers up and increasing, that's a challenge, but that's all of the things we're talking about on all of these days about what to do on social media to get followers and such tweets linking to you. So sometimes people, this is tweets besides your own, other people's tweets that um, they, uh, there is a tweet that links back to your website or your Twitter account. There have been three in this month, which is 200%, and then it shows the, the stats there. And it's pretty detailed because then it breaks it down, you know, uh, month by month. On March, on the 24 days so far, the top tweet with nearly 200 impressions has been this one, where there was a little joke about the 404 pages not found. It's a little programmer's joke there. No one gets it. Moving on. Um, top media tweet, 189 impressions. There was a picture right here that that was that we posted with a little bit of text here and it's okay what's in a name do you need to have a perfect domain name search engine increasing you say no so basically your domain name doesn't really matter anymore because it depends on your content that was seen by 189 people and then in so far here this month you know only four tweets this in number of impressions lost two followers etc uh, top card tweet so here it shows that, that someone on Twitter, thank you, Kathy, um, tweeted this, mentioning our company. There's our company Twitter there. Uh, that gained 48 impressions, so 48 people saw that. And a reply. So then you go back on February, and you see those stats, and on and on and on. So this is a pretty straightforward screen. It tells you your stats. It tells you how you're doing on, on Twitter. What do you do with the data is more up to you. Well, I can easily fix this. Tweet more, which will give me more impressions, hopefully more profile visits, more mentions, get more followers, get more links. So all of that is in your hands. Use Twitter more. So if you just went to this page today for the first time, it may not be fully complete because you just activated it. Now that you've activated and you and you have it set up, it should then help you in the future. Briefly, if you look at the top under tweets, again, this is another way to look at the data. Oh, I had a lot of impressions on this day right here. I must have done something really good. What did I do? So you go back in the timeline here and it'll tell you, on this day, you posted this thing. I got you this number of impressions and engagements. They call it engagements instead of conversions. But there were two engagements, which was a 9.5 engagement rate. <coughs> so just making a note here. Impressions, conversions, People saw your content, conversions, people um, completed a goal. Twitter calls conversions engagements or engagement.
We also have CTR, which is click-through rate, which is basically uh, conversions divided by impressions. That's your CTR. It's just a percentage, it's just a number that explains how effective something was. If I got 500 impressions on something, but only two clicks, two divided by 500 is a very small number. If I had 500 impressions and 300 clicks from it, 300 divided by 500 is a much larger number. So your CTR percentage is higher than the other. It just means you're being more effective. People are actually doing something. And so on that screen right here, Twitter is saying, these are your engagements, or this is your engagement, two. Two divided by 21, 9.5. Yes. If I pay an ad for Twitter, how do they charge me? CTR or conversions? It's uh, well. The problem with with conversions is that it's uh, it can only do so much. Any of these social networks can only do so much with conversions. A lot of us, our big conversion is that we want to make a sale. Let's say these networks really can't tell you that data to that point as in, I tweeted a coupon on my site and I paid for it on Twitter, and uh, people, a thousand people clicked on the coupon. Well, the coupon took them to my website where they still have to click buy now and add their credit card. So Twitter and Facebook and such can't track it all the way like that. So the social networks can only track these conversions basically on their network. Uh, outside of the network, there is that ability to some degree, but that's you know, these networks are, are showing you what's happening in their network and how they charge you uh, is related to what's happening on their network. I have to double check with Twitter, but I believe it's, it's, it's for impressions. Um, if you take a look at audience at the top, this is very useful because this will tell you who your followers are, um, what they're into, a lot of our followers are into technology here, uh, business and such. It seems to be more male than female. So people always ask, well, which is the best network to use to reach the right audience? The thing is that there are demographics in general for every network, but the answer is it depends on you. If you're trying to reach a specific audience, you will be able to reach it on every network. And you'll be able to know if you're reaching the audience under these analytics screens, under these insight screens. So here, if I was trying to reach a male audience, I, I'm going toward it here on Twitter. If I was trying to reach a female audience, I'm not quite reaching it, and that's most likely because of the content I'm putting, I'm putting out. So maybe some of this stuff does not appeal to a certain demographic I'm trying to reach. Your followers organic audience. So you can look at all of that. You can look at, you know, their, the top language here, who's, uh, what carrier they're mostly using, mostly iPhone people are following, and so forth. So you can look at all of this on your own. Events. How do they get that information? Just through the account itself? Yes. When uh, anyone creates an account on Twitter uh, and you fill in all that biographical information, Twitter's collecting it all. People are agreeing to give that information to Twitter. As people use Twitter, then it also builds a profile on you. So does Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, all of them. As we use these networks, these networks are building a profile about your interests and such. And that's why here, when we look at audience, it says, well, most of your audience is interested in technology because people are tweeting about technology, talking about technology, retweeting about technology, and then Twitter's telling us that. And that's useful because then we can say, if that's the most popular topic, let me post content of the most popular topic to reach an audience. Events. This is, uh, is going to be very useful for you under events. This is how you latch on to people. This is how you find people on Twitter on a topic. People are always saying, well, is there like a list of all the hashtags that I can look at? There is, and it's like a trillion lines long because people can make up a hashtag anytime. But here, under events, these are events that are going to happen or have happened uh, in the real world or online, whatever, and that people are going to be tweeting about. I am a small, local sports therapy company. 
and I want to find more customers so that I can get my services as a sports therapist, you know, hired. There are various sporting events that are coming up. The NHL season is coming up, college basketball. Um, when does this all start? So these, it's telling me these are the days that you want to be active for these events. What's the audience? Right now it's not available, but for some of these, like this one, March Madness, it started. 35 million people are engaged in that. So uh, perhaps I want to be tweeting about March Madness so I can click to go deeper in there and see, well, these are the countries that are interested in that. Uh, they're on these devices. Um, these are the top tweets. You know, what are people tweeting on that? And so here you can get some insight into what's hot on Twitter and how can I reach an audience. And you can look at these other items a little later. The last, the last two things we'll look at for Twitter recap. Um, I've got a couple more things. Any questions on this analytics screen? The second thing is, uh, remember on Facebook I mentioned that you do reach, you get more impressions and conversions when you pay for it. That's the nature of the game on, on Facebook. On Twitter, I believe you can reach a really good audience without paying at all. You just have to be active. Sometimes, though, I don't have time to be active. I need to run my business. So Twitter also has ads. Twitter also has paying for more impressions. At the top right corner, do you see that it says Go to Ads? Click on Go to Ads. And we won't, I won't really go too far in this, but this is the screen where you would set up ads on Twitter, just like Facebook. Very similar in that you, you boost your tweet on Twitter. What's cool on Twitter is that you can, you can uh, create a campaign, an ad campaign, that you craft it with like three or four different tweets, and Twitter will be smart enough to put the right tweet to the right people to hopefully get you more uh, conversions, more engagement. So this is, a whole, this is a whole huge thing to talk about. We don't really have time. You should explore it. There is help on the top right corner. You can always check on help. But again, as little as a dollar to reach more people, ten dollars you reach more people, a hundred dollars you reach even more people, and that's the nature of modern, uh, of modern social media. You can do it pretty well, all for free. You just need time, or you can do it even better if you've got money, and you can mix the two. Maybe budget twenty dollars for this year and see how you're going to spread out that money throughout the year. I think 20 is way too low for one whole year. You know, you spend more on that on coffee, I bet. So maybe cut back on one latte and use that on your Twitter ads, and you will see that you are going to reach more of an audience. Victor, Alex, this is Twitter or Facebook is better over the other? The short answer is, is that Facebook is better than all of them. But the long answer is that it depends on who you're trying to reach. It depends on your budget, because really on Facebook, you've got to use it with a budget, with money. Uh, so they're all good. And in personal, when we do this for companies, they all work, they all work really well to different degrees. Um, uh, so really, I can't, I can't quite give an answer. It depends on what you're trying to accomplish and your content. But that's why this overview of this two-month class is a little bit of everything. Try a little bit of everything, see what works, see what you like, and then go with what works for you. Let's go to the address now, tweetdeck.twitter.com. Tweetdeck.twitter.com. I've been saying that you need to create a business account for Google+, a business account for Facebook. Today we'll create a business account for Pinterest, because there's personal, there's business. And I've been saying that on Google+, and Facebook, uh, you can create managers. I create the, the, the Facebook account, but I allow other people to also help me manage it. I can do that on Google+, as well. And I've been saying you can't quite do that on Twitter. You can, actually, but you need to do it this way. If you go to tweetdeck.twitter.com, I believe it'll ask you to log in. 
on mine, it already logged me in, but let me look over your shoulder where your shows. TweetDeck.Twitter.com gets started. Click on that Get Started button. This is just... TweetDeck.Twitter.com. This is Twitter's advanced user management. I mean, uh, account management panel. This is where I can ha I can uh, look at a bunch of screens like a professional. All my tweets, notifications, messages. I can add all of these columns. Try on the left side here. Do you see add column? Click on add column. Add column. Give me a column of search. Let's click on search. And under search, on top here, I'm going to say uh, cookies. So what I'm going to get is cookies and then add column. What I'm going to get is a brand new column that is live that every time that keyword appears on Twitter, it'll show it to me. So that's how I can keep up to date with hashtags and trends and all of that. You simply add a column you can add a bunch of these kinds of columns, like what are trends that are going on. But search is often the one you'll use. And then it'll ask you, okay, what's a keyword or hashtag? Let's say March Madness. That's not a hashtag, it's just a it's just a, a phrase on Twitter. And then I add the column, and then now I'm gonna get a column of of that. So this these what columns of data. What's that? Search. So then here I've got all of this data happening right now. This is the this is what the pros use because here I can keep up to date. What if okay I invented a hashtag? So I'm going to do search again, and I've got hashtag PMD Interactive. Add column. Uh, 148 days ago. So I can put in hashtags or keywords or whatever, and then it'll show it to me. And then this is how I can monitor my hashtag, my company's hashtag. Now, obviously, the only tweet about that has been a while ago when our company put that. We haven't used our hashtag over and over because that's the thing about making up your own hashtags. Unless you follow through and get more people to... Um, to actually use it, it's going to be an empty column like that that doesn't have any activity. So this is a big topic to talk about, but we have other things to talk about. So TweetDeck is what you want to use to, you know, be a social media pro and follow all of that. And then you can go over to accounts, and this is how you can add more people to manage your one Twitter account. So if you go to accounts. Um, you can, under accounts, you can, uh, you can invite other people to manage this account. So that's how other people to help you manage the same account. So again, this is a big topic. We don't quite have all the time for it, but any general questions on TweetDeck? Yes. Um, schedule advanced tweets? Yes, exactly here. Um, you notice you have new tweets at the top left corner, so I click, I'm going to make a new tweet. Here's your tweet, and then it says schedule it. So here's how you can set up tweets for next week. I don't have to be changed to my computer all week long. I can put 10 tweets here, schedule them to whatever times I want, and then they will automatically then get published at those times, and they'll get listed right here. I can log back in again, and it'll show me all my scheduled tweets. Last thing, and then we're moving on. Just take a quick look at this. If I go back to Twitter.com and go to my profile settings, my very last button at the very, very bottom, deactivate my account. 
So if you say, okay, Twitter's not going to work for me, you go back to twitter.com, you go to your icon on the top right corner, settings, and the very last setting is deactivate my account. It's a little button, they kind of don't want you to see it. It's right there at the very bottom. Let's look at some of these similar things for uh, Google Plus briefly, and then we'll go on. So, final questions on Twitter? Okay, I'm going to log out of my Twitter. You can log out if you'd like, and now we'll go back to <coughs> Google Plus. So, let's go to plus.google.com. go to plus.google.com and then at the top right corner you want to click sign in <clears throat> and then of course the very first thing we'll mention on Google Plus is we have to remember to switch to the business account we'll do that in a moment go ahead and log into Google Plus So you log into Google Plus, and the first thing that'll happen, 99% of the time, it takes you to your personal account. If you set it up the way we did it in class, we created a personal account, and then we added business accounts. Uh, there, there are sometimes ways to create directly a business account, but that's usually full of pitfalls. So we did it together in that we create a personal account and then a business account. And I can tell on mine, at least, because on the top right corner there's my picture and there's my name. It is my personal account. On the top right corner, if yours doesn't have your picture, it'll probably have just a little, a little blue person. So if you click on that, it's telling me this is my Google Plus profile. Remember the terminology. I'll write it right here. Google Plus profile is personal account and Google Plus page is business account. So at the moment mine says on the top right corner Google Plus page. So I'm on my I'm sorry Google Plus profile. So I'm on my personal profile. I've previously created pages. We had a class where we did that. So I see on this menu here a bunch of other of the clients that we manage on Google+. And for yourself, you probably just see your personal profile and your one page that we created together last time. And you probably also see all your Google Plus pages there. So to switch back and forth, the first thing, I mean to, to use this, the first thing you want to do is log in and then click on your icon on the top right and then click on the business page you want to manage. So go ahead and click your business page. It says Google Plus page. It's a business page. And now on the top right corner, I see the logo of that company and I see the name of that company. So there's my personal, there's my business. Victor, could you just go back one page before you went on to the You have two, because mm -hmm. I have that problem. Well, it's, in this case, it's not a problem. It's because this particular company has a location in San Diego and Los Angeles. So those are two different, two different uh, 
it's the same client, but it's two different Google Plus pages for two different locations. We post some stuff for the San Diego audience, and we post different things for the Los Angeles audience. So you can do that. You can have multiple Google Plus pages if you've got multiple locations. The reason I ask, uh, I have two mm. Google accounts, so I have Google Plus and Google Accounts, and even though it's IPv4, same page, but one company, and I have three different versions. That's a little bit different. Yeah. In here, this is on purpose. This is on purpose because we created different pages for different locations. Mm -hmm. On yours, you did it on accident. And there is a way to merge, a way to merge these things. And what I would say is go to business.google.com, and there, and we've seen this before, but in here, there's going to be a help. Um, a help button on the yeah on the top left menu. Once you go to business.google.com, on the three lines on the left, there's a there's there's a menu, and then there's going to be at the very bottom support. There is a number that you can call, a phone number, talk to a real person at Google, and say this is my problem, help me fix it, and they'll help you fix it. Or oh, I could just delete the other two that I didn't care. Yeah. So I only have to open my business page. It's all tied to a specific email address, yes. So if you used a certain email address to create this, yeah. If it's a little confusing, I would give them a call, and they'll probably guide you for the better way to make it as easy as possible. So once you've uh, switched over to your business account, uh, it, it might be telling you again get, get the new Google Plus. If it does, you do want to select take me to the new Google Plus because eventually everyone's going to use this version of it. And what I wanted to talk about on this is just reminding you that you have to switch between the accounts and From the menu here, we've got these items, home, collections, etc. Let's go look at settings. So here are a variety of settings um, that you might want to look at at some point. If you're getting too many emails about Google+, Plus, this is the screen that you go to to kind of cut those down a bit. This would be under email notifications, because you could get an email from all of these things. Every time someone posts, every time someone comments, every time someone adds you, every time this, that, this, and that. So if you're getting way too many emails from Google+, Plus, it's under the settings here, under notifications. Okay, so you've got the main uh, Google Plus business page where you can look at your content and your collections and all of that. But then you've also got on the top right corner, if you click on your logo, if you click on your logo at the top right, click Edit. This is where you can go back to edit your, your company information. And you might see insights. Raise your hand if you see insights on the screen. A few people. If you don't see insights, that's just you don't have traffic, perhaps, yet. So there's nothing really to show you. But here is Google Plus's version of these analytics from Twitter. They call it insights. On this particular client, it's had 1 million views on Google Plus all time in the last 30 days is what the impressions and conversions have been and I can look at it you know in longer time horizons there was a big spike right there 
but in the last 30 days it shows number of views, total views, which is impressions. People have searched for the keywords of this company this number of times. Um, how many views on the actual page itself because People can look at your, it differentiates between people looking at your Google Plus about page and your content itself. Remember we talked about Google Plus, we want to post on communities. Communities is the best way to reach more people. So here, all of the views basically are coming from, from the posts that we add um, to the communities. Less is coming less views are going directly to the page itself. That's not good or bad. I'm just showing you that Google Plus has a difference about that. Are people looking are people going directly to your Google Plus page to look at your stuff or are they looking at your stuff throughout Google Plus? 183 posts, views, 4600 photo views and so forth. So again, all of this data it's showing me here. Uh, how many clicks? So these are conversions here. There's impressions, there's conversions. These are some conversions. 1,000 clicks, um, 361 clicks to the website. We posted something on Google+, Plus, a cool picture, and a link back to the website to buy the product. 361 clicks. A lot of clicks for people to get driving directions. That's why this particular business has the location uh, has a physical location in the about page because more and more people are using mobile devices, mobile apps, they want the driving directions to your business, it's built into the Google Plus bio page, they click it and then they get directions or a call. And it shows here that in general these are the locations where people are getting directions from just anywhere in San Diego County, specifically San Diego. People are hearing in you know, downtown San Diego, what's this place I hear about? Give me driver directions down there. There's also some heat coming from there. They actually have a third location. The first location was in Tijuana, which is in that area right here, actually. So people want directions to the Tijuana branch. From San Diego, people want directions to the Chula Vista branch, and so forth. So again, more data, more insights. and you can go and look at this on your own. What are the posts that were added and how did they reach people like this one? This lamb quesadilla taco, it, it reached 1,800 people and this was for free because at the moment Google Plus doesn't have any paid um, any paid post. You can't boost posts on Google Plus at the moment because people use the Google AdSense, Google AdWords, that sort of thing. They pay for Google for Google placement and Google counts it all together basically but notice here this particular one posted to a community got a lot of impressions same thing here for some reason this one didn't really get any activity you know, it's clearly a tasty looking photo but for some reason it, it wasn't a hit well actually it was a video so people just didn't really care I wouldn't have known that until I tried it, and I wouldn't have known that people didn't care about that until I looked at the insights. You might also have a reviews tab at the top there, and this is uh, very valuable uh, for you as a business because this is another place where people give reviews. Yelp is the big one, but Google reviews are also very big. Facebook reviews exist. There's, review, there's a bunch of review sites. Which one should I care about? Well, Yelp, number one, and then of course uh, Google Plus and, and Facebook uh, reviews. And so, okay, here was a not very good review, basically saying, I expected something better. Okay, um, so the purpose of all of these is to then click review and reply, and then reply. Um, if you are, if you do get bad reviews, that's good. Not because you got a bad review, but because you got someone that was paying attention to you that you could hopefully convert 
into a good review. I think I've mentioned it before, but I'll say it again. If you do get reviews on sites and you get a negative review, you do want to fix them, but you don't want to bribe them. You don't want to say, we're so sorry for your bad experience. Here's 10% off. Come back again. Because people, some people do make a living writing bad reviews to get good stuff, to get free stuff. So this may just be some, you know, some shady person on Google Plus that's fishing for something free, and it's leading me toward that because they don't even have their bio, their picture set up. It's still a basic account. That's a bit of an indicator to me that maybe it's fake. Okay, well, I don't know that. Maybe they are real. Maybe they never set up the account. So better thing to do would be, you know, I'm just going to write it in English for the moment, but we'll say, uh, very sorry we didn't live up to your expectations. How can we improve? Nothing about, we're sorry, here's, here's a coupon, uh, please give us another chance, here's a free dessert, no bribes. Don't give anything away, um, even on the most negative comment. I found a tooth in my taco. You know, don't give any, uh, a lamb's tooth, not a human's tooth. Um, we don't want to give anything away for free. Sorry, your, your, your tacos were bad, here's three free tacos. Don't give anything away. Acknowledge the problem, you know, tell them we understand your pain and all of that. And then ask how can we improve, what was wrong, give us another chance, we've dealt with the issue, try again, you know, whatever sort of way to smooth things over, public relations, but not give away anything. And it says, note that your reply will be displayed publicly. On Yelp, you can do it public or private. On Yelp, I would still do it publicly because you want other people to see you're trying to make it better. So you may suddenly have realized, look at all these reviews that I didn't even know that people are giving me, for good or for bad. Even the good ones, you should still reply with thank you notes and such. So, any questions on uh, Google Plus so far? Yes. Um, I don't have the edit info tab at the very top. Mine just says Home Insights. Do you all have Is your Google Plus business a physical location? No. That's the big. That's the big reason. Okay. This edit info is 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 if you've got an actual location that people can call or or drive to or see on a map. Okay. Okay, a couple more things. Um, if you click on the, if you click on your logo on the top right corner of your business, click on settings. On top right corner, you should see settings for your business, and then you should see a tab that says managers. This is how you add more people to manage the account. Everyone needs their own Gmail, their own Google Plus account. But then to have more people help you manage this, you go to this screen here, you click Add Manager, and then you put in their, their name or most likely their email. They need to have, you know, um, they need to have... an account on Google Plus. And then you can give them access here. Manager or communications manager. Uh, you would have to click on learn about the roles. These are different roles. But basically a communications manager can log in, uh, add posts, and reply to people and that sort of thing. And then the manager can do more than that, such as delete content, add more managers, and that sort of thing. You have to decide if you're going to give the other people on the team this much power, because the manager role is very powerful. In theory, if you set someone as a manager, 
they could remove you as a manager. They could go in, swoop in, and take the account and remove you from your own account because managers have that ability. Oh, I'm actually seeing here, I see they've changed it, which is good. Owner has the ability to add or remove more managers, delete the whole thing, and so forth. Managers don't. That's good. So other people won't be able to kick you out if you set them as manager. They used to be able to do that, but they fixed it. Good. Communications manager has only the ability to post to customers, respond to reviews and new insights, and most other actions, like adding a new photo, putting a video, that sort of thing. You can transfer ownership. Right now there's only one owner. So only I can add more people and remove them. If I you know, click on the little X there, I'll remove them. They will have no more access as a manager. But I can transfer my ownership to other people by going there and then you know, selecting to transfer them over. One owner at a time. And whoever is the owner then has the full control of kicking people out and adding people. So at the moment, I only have it. The actual owner of the restaurant um, is a manager, so see he can't kick us out. But you know we have a good relationship, so we'll we can transfer it no problem. Last thing back on settings, we created this Google Plus account, and we may have created it as a test account and such. The last thing is okay. I'm done with it. I don't actually want to use Google Plus. I'll stick with Pinterest. So if you go back to the settings here, at the very bottom, delete page. This will delete the business page, not your whole Gmail account. You still want a Gmail account because that is related to your main personal one. And on the personal one, then you can create more than one account, more than one business page. If you want to, create, if you want to delete all of that, you do have to delete the individual pages, and then you go back to the to your main profile and you go somewhere here on the settings somewhere they kinda hide it because they don't want you to leave An account somewhere you go to the settings maybe here and you'll say remove my Google Plus delete your Google Plus profile so there is the ability under settings usually somewhere they're hidden to some degree to delete all of this if you don't want to do it at all Any questions on Google Plus before we go on? Yes? Because the Google Plus is connected to the email, so they give it to someone manager to call, so the Google Plus, they can access my email? Nope. When we're here under the... When we're looking at that manager page and we add a new person, that person is going to log in with their own Gmail. So here, managers, each of these people have their own Gmail, uh, and I give them manager access. They log in, and, and they can only see their Gmail. They can't see mine. But they can all see what's on the Google Plus page. All right, any other questions here? All right, I'm going to log out, and I'm going to do one more quick thing for Facebook. So I will click on the top right corner, sign out. Now let's go to Facebook. And go ahead and sign into Facebook. Facebook is similar to Google Plus in that we have the personal account and the business account. So the first thing we need to do is make sure we're in the proper account. So I've logged in, I'm on my personal account, and on the top right corner you get the little triangle. Click the triangle. 
I've got several accounts to manage, but three of them are listed right away. So if if your business page shows up right away there, you can uh, you can click it. Uh, I have several to manage, so in my case, I have to click on See More or Manage Pages. To be safe, I'm going to click on Manage Pages because I think even if I just click it here, it does it did transfer. But again, I'm paranoid. So the way I do this to make sure that it's all working. manage pages here's a list of your pages and you want to log in that's the way that I know that I'm sure that um, I'm editing the page that I think I'm editing and to confirm at the top right corner I've got my company's logo I haven't put it on this one but you should see your company logo there and the name of your company So what I want to show about here, this um, you may or may not see this right away. Facebook is always adding new features and they don't always go out to everyone at once. But I went into my um, business page and I see at the top here, turn on instant replies. Raise your hand if you see that. A few people. If you don't see it, again, not everyone might get it at, at once. What could also happen is in your settings somewhere, you turned off the ability to message you. Remember when we were looking at the settings, we said at the moment, the default, Facebook lets anyone send your page a private message. So that could be useful for tech support, to talk back and forth with someone privately, but that can be turned on or off. It's in the settings somewhere that we looked at. And on mine, for this account, I've got it on. I've got that people can send this page a message. And therefore, I get this at the top. Create an instant response that will be sent to anyone who messages your page. That's an autoresponder. This is pretty new. Facebook didn't have this. This is to, well, let's take a quick look at it. This is to reply to people automatically as soon as someone messages this page. And I might not have time at that moment that someone sent you an urgent message to reply. And so this basically takes me to my settings screen into the messaging section because you've got general settings, page info settings, notification settings, messaging settings, response time. Your response time will only be visible on your page if you visit your page at least once a week and answer 90% or more of your messages. You can choose the option you think best represents how quickly you reply or have our response time updated, your response time updated. Okay, so this is, again, it's telling you. If you choose these various things here, it's saying people are going to send you messages and you should log in at least once a week and you should reply at least to 90% of those messages. So if someone has sent you 10 messages in total, you should have replied to at least 9 of them, 90%. So that it can calculate, because the first option here, once, you know, once 10 messages have been responded to, it'll calculate, oh, on average, you reply in two hours. So people will see, send a message, you should get a reply within two hours. You can then Instead, right here, typically replies in a day. So people will see, send us a message. You should get a reply within a day. Then it's still up to you to respond within a day. If you set it to automatically, it will calculate a time based on what you have done. If you do say, OK, you typically I reply within a day instant replies. Let customers know that you'll get back to them soon, and it's off. But on mine, if I turn it on, 
when Instant Replies is on, people will receive an automatic response when they message your page. So they'll get an automated canned answer right away. And you can type 250 characters, add some personalization, like a website address, or write your own address. Or thanks for messaging us. We are aware of the issue. Please fill out this form for your refund. Sorry, it exploded. So people will get a reply right away. Um, and like this whimsically here, uh, if, if I'm getting a lot of messages on a particular topic, I could put an instant reply here to reply again over and over to the same answer that I'm giving people over and over. Instead of, uh, instead of manually, this will do it automatically. And I can of course change it whenever I want. Please remember to mute your devices. All right, so um, auto replies. Not everyone has this, uh, but if you do, it could be useful to you. What could also be useful is if you go to settings, on the top right corner, you should see settings. And then you should see page rules. I did mention it before, but on the same topic as Twitter and Google Plus, I'll mention it again. You can do page rules here as well. Give more managers, give more people access to this account. They will only see this Facebook page, not any of your private stuff on your personal. So under page rules here, you add someone else's name or email, and they have to have a Facebook account. And there's various roles, and this explains itself here nicely. What does this role do? Editor can do all of this. Edit the page, send messages, publish pages, create ads. So if your credit card is attached, people can make ads on your behalf. See which admin created a post, view insights. Okay, if that's too much power, I can put them down to the moderator. They can do this, uh, these things, create ads also, but then the difference is uh, it's more obvious when you go lower such as advertiser can see which admin created a post create ad view insights and then analyst they can just see the see your post they can't really do too much and the highest level is admin can manage all aspects and create more user roles, add more people. And this, if you do choose the highest level, which is admin, you get a big old warning at the bottom. The admin says, if you're adding a new admin, please understand that they'll have the same control as you, meaning in theory they could then kick me out. So that's why the default is editor. You add more editors and they can't take you out. And just like the other two networks, let's say actually Facebook is not working for you. So if you go back to the general settings at the very bottom, remove page. This deletes this business page. You still have your personal profile. If you delete this business page, you'll still have to go to your personal profile. And somewhere in the settings of your personal profile, let me make it a little harder here. Somewhere in the personal 
profile, you've got deactivate your account. Then you can totally remove yourself from Facebook. All right, any questions on Facebook? No, just, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but create a page is how you create other business accounts. That's right. And they can't see your personal if you only add them to your create a business account. Well, that's just confirm the terminology. Creating the business account is creating one of these businesses. So once you. Create pages, yes. So once you've created a page, Victor's Bakery. Then the managers is the separate thing. Under those roles, then you add people to manage this page, and they will not see your personal stuff. They will only see what's on that page that you've given them access to. Sorry, yes? Can you show that again? So I'm on the page. I click on settings on the top right, and in general, the very last item is remove page. All right, any other questions? Um, actually, yes. I, I, like you were saying about being prepared, I'm trying to get people on my business page, but I'm, I'm not sure how to make sure that they're I'm trying to like them for my business page. You have to make sure that at the top right corner, it shows your company name. If it shows your personal name, you're doing it as personal. You need to make sure you're on company. And the way you're, you make sure of that is that you click on the triangle. And to be paranoid, I would go to Manage Pages and click the button that says Log In. That should then log you into your business page to make sure at the top right corner you're your business and you're running it as a business. I don't just, see log just, in. Just, I don't have a log in. Is that because For a couple of people, I did see that too. I don't have an answer. Okay. I don't know exactly why you don't see login. You're supposed to see login. Perhaps if you've only got one business, it doesn't say login. I've got multiple businesses, and they all say login. If you've only got one, I guess you just click on it. But you want to confirm at the top right corner that it's your business page that you're working with. Again, if it doesn't say that exactly, we'll do break soon. But it should be working like this. And sometimes there's little differences for people I don't know sometimes Facebook is not consistent unfortunately <laughs> sometimes all right I'm gonna log out of Facebook I'll say one more thing and then we'll take a break and then we'll talk about Pinterest I'm gonna log out so I just talked about Twitter Google Plus and Facebook again and later we're gonna talk about more networks well people then ask me how do you have a life? How do you do anything else besides be on social media? The trick is that there are various social media managing tools to help you manage all of them at once. So instead of me logging in to Facebook and Twitter and being chained to my computer and all of that, I can use one of these many managers and it will help me uh, have a life and, and do things uh, quicker and easier. There's many of these out there. Here's one that I'm going to recommend that I've used so I can vouch for it the most. If you go to buffer.com Buffer, a smarter way to share on social media. This is one of many networks out there, products, that let you post to all the big networks from one control panel. Instead of going to every one of these screens, log into Facebook, don't forget to log into Twitter, you log into Buffer and it does it all. So the preview here, for example, what would you like to share? When? Because you can schedule these things also. Attach anything and, and set it to Share this on Facebook, on Twitter, and Facebook, and LinkedIn on Pinterest. This seems really cool, and it's for, it's for, it's on the web browser. It's on, it's an app as well. 
because let's say we're on our app, mo we're on our device most of the time. I get a great idea to post. From my device, I log into my Buffer app, craft my post, click publish, and it goes to all the networks. Create your own content. Um, manage all the big ones. Sounds great. What's the catch? It costs something. The basic plan does let you manage, I forget how many at the moment, but the basic one does let you manage, I'm pretty sure at the minimum, Twitter, Facebook, and Google Plus, I think. I, have, I haven't logged in very recently. Usually we do this manually. We do it the hard way. But uh, for those of us that have less time, this is very good. So I forget how many for free you get access to. I'm sure it says here somewhere. But then it talks about pricing because eventually the free one might not fulfill all your needs. So under pricing, the, oh, here we go. Under free, it lets you have one user, one Twitter, email digests. Then you go up to the next levels. You go to the next levels, and then you're getting at $20 a month for more accounts, more access, more stats and abilities. And then you get over to the pro account, $40 a month, and you have all of these features. No, at least they don't do that. They don't put any, they don't put any ads and such. It's um, oh, actually, sorry. What I was looking at was their other system, which is called Respond. Um, but anyway, no, they they don't put uh, here. It is pricing. They don't put. Um, they don't, they don't put ads or anything. They don't co-opt your message. It's just that you're not able to do so many things. Okay. So so sorry here. Uh, okay, Buffer has acquired Respondly. That's their other product here now, the pricing of Buffer. Here we go. Free, one per platform, which, okay, they give you access to Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Google+, Plus for the free one. You can schedule 10 posts. You can have one user that does all of this stuff. You don't get any good analytics. Then the awesome plan is $10 a month. You can do 100 scheduled posts, and it gives you also extra uh, Pinterest, plus these extra features. Then if, okay, if you're a team or an agency, um, so the awesome plan lets you do 10. So you can have three Twitter accounts, four Facebooks, and so forth. The free one is one of each. Teams, then you're doing $99. Is that per year or per month? Um, somewhere it'll tell you. And then you can have all of this content. And then for a big, large company, $399. Again, is it yearly or monthly? I'd have to look. But the free one is going to give you a lot of great features. It's going to give you scheduling. It's going to give you multiple sharing to the... To, to, <coughs> to the same network. That's how you're going to be able to run your business and your social media. You have, an, you have a software like this that will help you manage it. This is not the only one. Another big famous one is Hootsuite. You might have heard of that one. I haven't used Hootsuite at all very recently. Um, I kind of like Buffer more, so I don't have much to say about it. This is a very popular one also. Hootsuite. I don't know the pricing at all. We can look here. But here's one. Buffer, Hootsuite. There's a couple of other ones. Does anyone know any other ones maybe you heard of to manage social media easier? Tailwind. Tailwind? I think I've heard of that one, but I don't I don't know it. Tailwind. Not this one. This is Tailwind Capital. Tailwind Smarter Visual Marketing. This is tailwindapp.com, your end-to-end -end solution. Well, this one focuses on Pinterest and Instagram, which 
those are two very good networks, but it's just two of them, whereas you know, Buffer and Hootsuite manage a few more, but this could be useful too. Pricing. It's $800 a month for the big, big expensive one. $9 a month, not so bad. So yeah, there's many of these out there. And uh, this is how it helps you get helps you manage. Uh, sometimes people ask the question and uh, about can I post the same thing to all the networks? Yes, you can uh, repost your content to all the networks. That's fine. You have different audiences perhaps on different networks, so then the same sort of message can be sent to all the networks. That's fine. But I recommend, and it is double the work, to post different things on different networks because each, each network has its own character, its own style, its own audience and such. And so it is a little better to post original content to each, but what I can say, so I'm going to say basic, same content to each network, and that's fine. Intermediate, same picture, different text. Same picture slash URL, because sometimes you're sharing a picture, sometimes you're sharing a link, a video, whatever, multimedia. Same multimedia, different text. Same message, different, you know, way to get the message across. I'm going to share that same picture to Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, but I'm going to craft the, t the, word, the text around it a little different. That's intermediate. And then advanced. Different picture, different text. There is double the work, triple, quadruple the work. And all of these can give you results. You have to see yourself. You have to try it. Um, that's why the social media marketing job title exists. Social media marketer, social media maven, social media guru, social media ninja, whatever the name that people make up for this thing. It's marketing. That's why this is a full-time job. Some, you know, McDonald's has a stable of people globally running their McDonald's Twitter account in English, in Japanese, in Spanish, in Russian, and um, crafting content, and maybe it's the same picture, but it's written about it differently in Spanish than in Russian. That's the advanced one. And so um, it is a lot of work, but it's a form of advertising, marketing, reaching an audience, and getting impressions. Impressions hopefully then getting you conversions, sales. Yes? Is it better to use those sites like Buffer and Hootsuite for using the more basic approach? Or I mean, because if you do different content on each of the different uh, media sites, I mean, it's like Buffer and those are more set up for the basic one, yes. They do have some aspects of intermediate because you're still, you know, they're, they're there to help it make, it make it easier. And suddenly when you go back to the, go to the intermediate, there's many more factors involved. So I believe to the, for the higher levels of price for these services, they do give you the intermediate versions in advance, but then that's almost defeating the purpose yeah. because then you might as well do it directly on the site itself. Yes? Is the uh, functioning site only for scheduling or can you actually create things on the site as well? Well, I see that as the same thing. Scheduling is that you are creating something to share. It's just at a later time. What do you mean specifically by creating? Well, you know, if you had like some kind of media, like a feature or a video, and then you wanted to add the content to it and link it to the <coughs> website, can you do that on a function on I thought I saw down here on um, somewhere. I thought I just saw it on. Yeah, here we go. Create on Buffer. Create your own content. Create images with the perfect size and format, typography, fonts, and all of that. So they've got a thing called Pablo, and uh, on Buffer, you can create you know actual content these little popular sort of meme things that have a text and a picture. 
So to some degree, you can also create them on buffer, at least, over on the other networks. Again, I don't use them all. This is the one that I like. And so, yes, you are able to create it there. And all of this social media stuff, almost, I, I, have, to I have to assume it under the radar, which I really shouldn't, but it's like, I assume you've all guys, all of you have got something to share. You know, I can't teach that. I can't teach you, take this photo, and create this video, and make this blog post. That's, you know, other classes and such. I'm assuming for all of this stuff, you have something to say online. And I can show you uh, how to create these profiles and use them effectively. But what you're going to say and such, that's still a lot up to you, and your marketing plan and all of that. Final questions on this, on any of the stuff we've recapped today? <coughs> All right, it's about 10.45-ish. Let's take a break. We'll be back at 10.55 and we'll talk Pinterest.